In this video, I'll be showing you how to create flying debris in Photoshop. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and it really supports the channel. Let's roll the video and enjoy. So let's get into the tutorial. So this is the final image here. And when, I, when we talk about debris and fractals and things like that, it's these elements here, the little rocks or debris what are flying around the hero. So what this debris does is it gives us a sense of action. It gives some light leading lines in what can complement the composition. And it can also create depth of field. Obviously these uh, are blurred out and you've got some larger ones at the front which are um, a little bit brighter and you've got these ones at the back which are a little bit darker but with uh, a little bit less contrast. And it creates depth in the image and it adds interest as well. So it just creates a fuller image. So how do you create these uh, debris or fractal parts? So there's various ways to do this. Sometimes you can use overlays where you just bring it in and put the overlay onto a screen blend mode and it will erase all the dark and just leave, leave the light parts but for this image I did not do that what I did is I took some images of rock and rubble and I just cut out some of the rocks and if we isolate the image it looks like this so I cut out these rocks I uh, then brought them in to the image on a layer and then I just added some motion blur and I put the motion blur uh, at a specific angle so I got the blur going a specific way. So let's get into this now and I'll show you quickly how you do it just using a, a, a rough example uh, of some rocks that I found online. So here's some rocks obviously these are going to look different to the others this is just for the purpose of showing you guys how to do it and I pick some more defined rocks so you can see them clearly in the image. So as you can see these are rocks here we don't need all these rocks so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a little bunch of them very roughly like so and then I'm going to just press ctrl J and I'm just going to duplicate that and if I press V now for the move tool what you can do is you can just bring them and move them around. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring it into this image here. So if we just slide it across with the move tool, hover over the image we want to bring it into and then without letting go pull it across into this image. Like so. So let's move that to the top of the layers panel so you can just see that in our image. So these are the rocks. So let's press Ctrl T and let's resize them. Obviously they look different to the other rocks but they will still work. So we can stick them down there or we could put them behind as well. I think the bigger rocks would be at the front. So let's just put them where the fire is. Obviously this is just for the purpose of this demonstration. Let's press enter. So what we want to do now is what we want to add some movement to them so it looks like they're going uh, moving in a specific way and the best way to do that is with motion blur so we go up to let's turn this actually first before we use any blur let's turn this into a smart filter let's press ok and what that means is if we decide later on down the line because we're working non-destructive if we want to change the amount of blur we've put on these rocks we can go back in and change it if you don't convert it to a smart filter first you cannot do that so it's converted to a smart filter now you've got this little icon here so what we can do is go into filter and then let's go to blur and then let's go to motion blur click on motion blur and then you have this icon here um, this little circle so this is your direction and it tells you the angle there and this is your distance so the more you pull this and the number increases the more blur will be on your uh, debris. So let's just pull that right down to 2%. So look, put it to 2%, there's hardly anything there. So the lines of this image 
is we've got lines coming this way and then we've got some lines coming this way we've got uh, kind of the shadow in his face coming down leading along his shoulder and down his arm and then we've got a couple of mirroring lines here with the gun there with the cartridge and then we've got some lines kind of going this way as well so you kind of got that gun which is the main diagonal and then um, yeah I think that's the only one that way a little bit of his scarf um, and that's it so you kind of got this way and that way but the the, the line we're looking at is this uh, these lines this way so what we want to do is we want to make sure we kind of line this little um, it looks like a bit like a plane propeller I'm not actually sure what the proper name for it but we'll go with the line the propeller up so the line goes with the angle of the lines we want in the image like so so I can probably maybe just pull that up a little bit and then we can just increase our distance like so and you get this movement there and it looks like the rock is moving obviously we would need some more gaps in that to make it look a bit more realistic there's too much there um, so let's press ok but what we can do as well is we can just go back in with our move tool and if we want to just move that around so let's put it here so it's matching the line of the fire the line of this other debris in it this debris in the back and then if we wanted to we could just come in which we would do in real life uh, you would want to color match the images um, so you would create a curves adjustment you would hold down alt clip it to the stone and then we could just bring the, the darkness down on this rock like so somewhere about here and then if you wanted you could also create another curves adjustment where it's also a clip to those rocks add maybe a little green in or something along those lines and some blues so I'm just putting the colour curves here just to match it a little bit and then we could go back down here and then we could just add some more contrast to those bricks or debris or stone whatever you want to call it like so and then we could even add a hue saturation and just pull down the saturation a little bit so somewhere around here and could change the hue as well Let's change the hue a little bit to match so somewhere like here and there we have our debris so let's just duplicate that and also I'll show you it behind the model as well so let's select all them holding down shift selecting them all and then just press ctrl J like so and that will duplicate it so let's see let's bring it right down behind our model somewhere down here like so and let's just turn off some of these layers this is a very old image by the way so the workflow for this image <laughs> there's a lot of uh, wasteful stamp visible layers here but that's not the lesson for today so let's now with the move tool just pull that up behind our guy and there we can add some more of this rock debris behind him and as you can see it's still got that motion it's got following the motion of this line as well and that's it it's a very simple technique um, obviously if you was creating it you would want the like these pieces here you would want a little bit more separation between the parts but again it depends how close you are to the explosion and the closer you are the probably the closer these uh, this debris would be together to the impact of the detonation so you can play around with that and you can use this effect on various different things so before we finish this tutorial I just wanted to show you uh, this is the final image how this came out obviously without these uh, demonstration rocks and this is where it started from so basically I shot my work buddy at the time in the studio we had a um, toy gun which was bright orange in England you can't buy guns what are black so I shot him in the studio with a two rim lights and then a key light on him here and then basically all I did was add in the sky add in the debris change this to black and then put some fire in and then the rest of this is basically from dodge and burn and color grading so you can see what a difference it makes as well 
and that the debris really finishes the image off it just adds detail and story to the image so just to quickly recap what we did is we used some stock rock here we masked them out from the background and all we did then was bring them into our image here we placed them where we wanted them we then turned it into a smart filter we then added motion blur and some direction in the motion blur to the debris to give it that movement and then we just matched the stones to the rest of the image with curves adjustments so if you actually would like to create composites like this I have a course called Hollywood Processing and if it looks of interest to you there is a link below the video well that's it for this tutorial, I hope you found it of value, if you did it would be amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe. You could even share this video with someone you feel will benefit from it. It helps our channel a lot to get seen and we appreciate it each and every time you do. You guys are awesome, we love the interaction, so thanks again, we truly are grateful. Thanks guys and I will see you next time.